everybody, welcome back to another exciting episode of the Stash Report from the Stash Project. Today is October 22nd, 2018, and looky looky there, it's almost time to go trick-or-treating. Uh, we have some uh, domestic releases to actually talk about. Uh, finally, uh, getting the Ravel train back on track. I know that'll make a lot of people uh, happy. A few of the uh, reissues and things like that that were uh, supposed to come up prior to the disaster that was the Hobbico bankruptcy are starting to uh, worm their way out of the, the uh, background. We also have one of the uh, October releases from round two to discuss and then a few things from overseas. We also have some kit announcements to uh, discuss and... Uh, as I sit here and think about this, I realize that I can't look what I was going to look up on the computer right now because it's going to conflict with the camera running, uh, which will make sure that what I'm about to talk about here are the only kit releases. But yeah, so it's been a uh, busy, busy week. Hope everybody had a good weekend and whatnot. Uh, we had our first official snow of the year, as it were, uh, here. I mean, we're just a dusting. We didn't actually, I don't think, actually saw any snow, significant snow whatsoever. Uh, but I know that the mountains uh, are starting to get their snow here in Pennsylvania, West Virginia. The ski resorts are happy. They've gotten their first uh, snow of the year. And actually, it's going to be cold enough this week. They could probably make snow. Uh, but as I said, some kid announcements from Fujimi for January of 2019. That's right, some of the first 2019 kid announcements to be made. Uh, one thing we want to cover real quick up front. Uh, we discussed, you may recall, in the uh, All Japan model and hobby show uh, video, the uh, decals that were going to be coming out for the 24 hours of spa car that Good Smile Racing ran in 2017. And we talked about we didn't know when the decals would come, we didn't know when those decals would come. Uh, they are officially out for pre-order uh, at all of the uh, regular places that we always uh, associate with for December. So if you're interested in a set of those decals, looks like they're going to run about $30, $33, depending on where you purchase them from. Uh, not obviously counting shipping, but decals are... Uh, you know, with things we consider to be free shipping when you're shipping kits because they add no actual weight to the package. So if you happen to be ordering, like, the AMG that they need to go on, uh, you know, the decals basically don't cost anything to ship because the weight of the kit will, you know, be the shipping cost, basically. A sheet of decals doesn't weigh anything or does not weigh enough anyway to to make the shipping cost the next bump up in, in, in cost as far as, uh, you know, weight goes. Um, but uh, as I said, that was just one thing we'll make sure we covered. I know a lot of people were interested in those decals going forwards. Uh, have heard rumors that Good Small Racing, or Good Small Company rather, uh, will do other decals uh, that are very similar uh, for another race in Japan this year, for the 10 Hours of Suzuka, which was normally a, an endurance race on the Super GT series, but they took the Suzuka race for the Super GT series, turned it into just a, one of the regular, uh, what would be considered a sprint race pretty much anywhere else. Most of the Super GT races are, are what would be considered a sprint race, basically a three-hour long race uh, that used to be a, a, an endurance race for Super GT, 10 hours. And what they did this year, like I said, was take that Super GT, just turn it into uh, another, uh, I think technically this year was a 500-mile race rather than being kilometer-based like most of their races are. And then the 10 hours of Suzuka ended up being a uh, basically a showcase race for GT3 cars. Uh, it was part of the, uh, uh, I'm trying to think of what the, who's sponsoring it this year. I think it's Continental. Uh, the, Inter it's the Intercontinental GT Challenge uh, that is a number of endurance races across the uh, the world. And I want to say the Continental Tire sponsors that. Uh, it may not be. I may be losing my mind on that entirely. But it's things like the 24 Hours of Dubai, the 24 Hours of Spa, the 24 Hours of Nürburgring, uh, the 10 Hours of Suzuka. It'll be the last, usually the last race of the FIA GT uh, Challenge is, is Macau at the end of the year which isn't necessarily an endurance race unless you're just trying to get through practice. But that race ended up drawing in a number of teams that would be from outside Japan. There were several Super GT teams that, that GT300, the GT3 class, that did run. Good Small Racing was one of them. But it did draw in uh, several uh, competitors from the United States, like Sun Racing was there. They're uh, one of the IMSA Weather Tech teams. Uh, it drew in... A couple of different teams from uh, Blanc Pain Endurance in Europe and things like that. So, uh, should be interesting. Well, I mean, the race is over. We know how the results were. The Good Smile uh, team finished fifth overall. Uh, but it should be interesting to see if any more decals come out of that race, uh, being that 
it was, you know, a, a, just a regular style GT3 race that's sort of uh, unique. A lot of unique liveries. Uh, Ghost Mod did something basically similar to their uh, 24 Hours of Spa car. It is another double zero number, you know, double zero as far as the num car number goes. Uh, the design is similar but different, sort of the same way. Uh, I guess if you looked at all of the, say, BMW Z4 kits that Fujimi did for Good Small Racing, I mean, they're all the same, more or less. It's all the same uh, Miku Vocaloid uh, cartoon character thing on the hood, but it was, you know, if you sit down and look at them, they're, they're uh, different between all the different liveries and things like that. So, similar thing, red car, uh, Miku on the sides and, and the hood and stuff, but it's not the exact same livery as the Spa car. So, we'll keep you up to date on that if that uh, ends up... Uh, you know, be coming to fruition in 2019. So Fujimi has announced uh, several just reissues, basically. Of course, um, the big new tool would be, of course, be the the Toyota FJ, and that's going to be coming out in December. So they're going to reissue their uh, 120 scale McLaren Honda MP4 6. Uh, this is going to be a, done, be able to be done as either the Brazil Grand Prix, the San Marino Grand Prix or the Japanese Grand Prix, and it is going to be a deluxe kit. Uh, they're going to be adding photo etch in it, specifically for how the car ran at the Japan Grand Prix. So that kit has been done in the past. It's been reissued at least, I think, once since we've been doing this show for the past three and a half years, and uh, or four years, actually. And, uh, you know, it's just them adding photo etch, basically, to an existing kit. They're going to reissue the Suzuki Hustler, Yes, that's Suzuki Hustler. This time it's going to be uh, molded in candy pink. It's very much a Pepto-Bismol pink, believe me. Uh, and then they're going to reissue the 1979 Toyota Crown 2.8 hardtop. This is sort of a variation of the Toyota Crown 2000 Turbo that came out uh, last year. Uh, it's a basic, sort not quite motorized kit, but a very basic uh, Toyota Crown. Uh sort of a down-level trim, if you will. It's a 2.8 liter, just sort of family car, rather than being the turbocharged version. I mean, the turbocharged version doesn't come with an engine anyway, so how would you even know? But uh, that's going to come back, and it's been a little while since that kit has come out, uh, sort of in a factory stock appearance. It's going to have all of the uh, aero parts and things like that the kit normally comes with, but uh, the last reissue of it that I've seen anyway did not come with like a set of factory stock wheels and things like that. And then uh, the last kit on here that's a reissue is their Porsche 911 3.8 RSR. Um, that is a kit that, has, again, has been done in the past. It is one of the curbside uh, real sports versions of their 911s that was done in the 1990s. Uh, it's been a little while since that kit's been reissued. Um, I'm thinking probably two mid-2000s maybe is the last time that kit saw the light of day. Uh, as it's got the box, last time I've seen one of these kits, as far as the box art goes, it has the box art that the kits had uh, around 2004 or so. So, again, been a little while since that kit's come around. I've seen a few people say, oh, hey, look, that kit's coming back out, so it must be uh, significant, at least a few people. Um, it's one of, the, one of the very few Fujimi Porsche kits I don't actually own. Um, and I must actually show them on pile on uh, to get one either, but eh, we'll see how I feel about it when it gets a little closer to... Uh, the kit coming out, obviously, you know, got four months at this point. So, uh, over on the release side of things, we have uh, several domestic things to talk about. Uh, originally, we were not going to, but then a few things came in over the weekend, so we do now. Uh, first up on the round two side of things, you have this reissue, which is the 2009 Dodge Challenger RT in the Showroom Replicas line. Uh, just a reissue of the Showroom Replica kits from the late 2000s. I believe this is molded in a like dark blue purplish color, like the box art shows. But I mean, other than that, it is just a straight reissue of what is essentially an unassembled uh, promotional model. So, if you have seen or built any of the kits that they did in this series in the 2008 to 2011 period, uh, there was Challenger, there was the Camaros, there was the Corvettes. Um, they're all more or less the same, where they have. Uh, a very low parts count, somewhere in the 30 to 40 parts range. The interiors were famous for having sort of a rubber vinyl seat things that uh, most people couldn't figure out how to paint because, you know, model paint doesn't necessarily stick to that sort of thing. And, uh, yeah, just a reissue of this uh, kit, so it is what it is. But over on the Ravel side of things, on the other hand, we have uh, several of the 
kits that were supposed to be coming out in the uh, first and second quarters of 2018, finally seeing the light of day. Uh, these are all things that are actually in stock at my local hobby shop, who uh, we've blatantly stole the pictures from their Facebook page. So this is not a coming soon. These are actually out. It's a matter for you to go out and find them. I've heard from some, a few people that uh, some of these kits are actually out in Hobby Lobby already. So first up, you have the uh, modified reissue of the 48 Ford. This is, of course, the Grease Lightning uh, tied-in vehicle. A uh, few new parts added to this. this is technically a modified reissue where you're getting the Nerf uh, bumpers as well as, I believe, the uh, hubcaps the, uh, are new as well, or all the, the Grease Lightning graphics as well. Uh, this kit can be built factory stock, so if you've been looking for a 48 Ford in a factory stock version, uh, while there are several of those floating around in reissue land, if you you know are somebody who uh, doesn't have a hobby shop, doesn't like eBay, doesn't go to model shows, which seems to be like everybody anymore, uh, this will be available front on frontline retailers again. Again, you know, basically a straight reissue with the addition of five, six extra parts, and obviously a new set of decals for the movie tie. And then on a straight reissue side of things, you have a reissue of this. This is the '67 Plymouth GTX. Uh, this kit comes what from the mid 1990s, I want to say, when the uh, tooled up the three of these uh, kits that are all basically more or less the same. I'm trying to think of uh, what other kits. I mean, there's the, this GTX, there is a Belvedere, right? And then there's a third one that is slipping my mind right now. But, uh, you know, they're basically all three of these kits are the same. There was like two Plymouths and a Dodge, I think it was. So Dodge Charger, this Plymouth GTX, and there's something else that I always lose. I always uh, cannot remember. Looks like this uh, basically is a reissue of the California Wheels uh, reissue of this, which was done uh, a while back, where you're good. It has the factory stock wheels in it and like a set of uh, bigger wheels. Um, but beyond that, just a straight reissue. Uh, getting a reissue of this as well, which a lot of people really seem to really care about, which I can't understand because this is one of those kits that has been around so many times now. I really don't understand who doesn't have one. Now, I understand that, uh, this, of course, we're talking about the Rommel's Rod, the Tom Daniels uh, weird-ass quasi-Nazi ghost car thing. Uh, I know that it's been retooled. I know that this is like a new tool that they did. Uh, part of the reason why this kit is part of the Ravel Go that the Ravel that's going forward and not part of the stuff that went to uh, Atlantis was because this was a new tool that was done, and obviously the tooling is in China with everything else that Ravel's tools are uh, that aren't, you know, the few things that are stateside. But it's been reissued, what, at least once since the new tooling was done in 2009. I, I, everybody seems to go crazy about, oh my god, it's a Rommel's rod, yay! It's like, oh my god, how can you not, if, you, if you're interested in this goofy thing, how do you not already have one? But I I, I oftentimes have the uh, inability to distinguish between people who say that they're going to go buy something and the people that actually go do buy something. And those, if the model companies really could sell something to everybody who says they're going to go buy one of those, they wouldn't, they, they'd be like GM sized. Because everybody always says they're going to buy a case of everything and then nobody ever buys anything. So I, I'd be interested to see how well this actually sells. Uh, Tom Daniel has gone on his own website and said that uh, Atlant that there's five tools that Ravel kept, and all the rest of the stuff went to Atlantis. We sat down, uh, basically with a listing of the of the kits that have been reissued recently and where they say they were made at last, and we can come up with nine tools that are Tom Daniel's tools that were last produced in China. So I, I don't really think, honestly. He knows what he's talking about. Now, I know that sounds like, how could he not? Tom Daniels licenses a lot of stuff to a lot of different places. He has licenses out to Ravel. Apparently, he's going to have licenses out to Atlantis because Atlantis says that they have some, like, figure kits and things like that that, that Tom Daniels did, like the uh, Son of the Red Baron and th Ghost of the Red Baron and things like that, whether or not we'll actually see them. Supposedly, there was... Uh, going to be some sort of model show, I think it's this coming weekend out in Colorado, um, I think it's supposed to be on the 25th, but the 25th to me would be, what, Wednesday, so it must be the 28th, uh, that they're going to announce what they plan to do for the first and second quarters out of all this, this stuff that they got off of, of uh, Blitz in that sale. But uh, Tom Daniel also licenses things to Mattel. He licenses things to Round 2. He licenses things to pretty much anybody who will pay him money for something he's done in the past, because let's face it, none of this stuff is new by any stretch of the imagination. 
And uh, like I said, I think he just, I, I don't know how much he really knows about who has what at this point. He just knows that somebody's, somebody's mailing him a check and he cashes it and he's happy. I mean, I can't blame him, but for him to go out and make these definitive statements when they can definitively be proven wrong, it, you know, a lot of people are seem to be very, very excitedly basing their opinions on what's going on based on what Tom Daniels said about something. And he's been demonstrably wrong about the whole Ravel thing. Uh, at least once, possibly twice, depending on how you look at things, uh, since everything went down in January. So, uh, nothing, not a knock against Tom Daniels by any stretch of the imagination. The guy's, you know, makes his money by licensing his name and his, his properties, but I think he's licensed so much, so many things to so many different places that if you nailed him, you know, put him under, under a corner, into a corner, oh, Mr. Daniels, where were you last Friday? He wouldn't, you know, know where his tooling really is. So, it'd be interesting to see what, you know, Atlantis really possesses uh, a lot of speculation going on in the forums about what Atlantis, all these things, this Atlantis is going to do this, Atlantis is going to do that, Atlantis is going to do the other thing. And I thought this was very entertaining. I'm sorry, we're going on a tangent here, but deal with it. Uh, very entertaining that, like, when we talk about the, on forums, not the face, not here on this, this channel, although there was some of it. We talked about the bankruptcy at Ravel, the fact that it was going to be a liquidation, and I told you the guys that back in January, and everybody told me I was wrong, but of course I wasn't. And, you know, this was going to happen, that was going to happen. You could, again, not prove a single thing wherever I said along the way that was wrong, because holy crap, it's not really that hard to read the tea leaves in this scenario if you really paid attention. Uh, there's a, We were all constantly told, well, you're wrong, you don't know what you're talking about, you're just speculating, you have no facts, you don't know anything, this, that, and the other thing. Constantly berated, and eventually a few people have, you know, sort of apologized, but that's beside the point at this, at this juncture. But this thread that is going on about what Atlantis owns, and what they're going to reissue, and what they're going to do, and oh my god, this, that, and the other thing, looks like, I, I popped in there the other day, I'm like, why hasn't anybody trampled into this thread like an out-of-control train wreck, and told everybody in here they don't know what they're talking about? Because, honestly, they don't know what they're talking about. I can't tell you what Atlantis is going to do, because Atlantis has never said, in any stretch of the imagination, to anybody who knows anybody, that I know at least, what they're going to do. They came out on their Facebook page, said, hey, we're going to this model contest in or show or vendor thing, I don't know what it is exactly, out in, in Denver, I think it is, it's Colorado, well, I'm not sure if it's Denver, but I assume Denver is the biggest city in Colorado, that... You know, we're going to be out there at the show, and we're going to announce at the show on October 20, they said 25th, but again, that's the middle of the week, that we're going to announce our first and second quarter of 2019 releases, and it's going to include some of the things that we purchased from Blitz. Okay, great. We'll all know this weekend what will be coming all coming along. I'm sure that uh, some of the old funnel duddles that love that old crap that Ravel clearly didn't have any interest in keeping uh, will be all over that list and provide it to everybody, but... I found it very interesting. <laughs> if you don't care about what was going on necessarily, it was very easy to say that you don't know what you're talking about. But if you do care about it because it's this old crap that you really, 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 really like, oh God, we're we know it. <sighs> I'd be very, I'd be very interested to see what that list is going to say and how much uh, excitement slash disappointment ends up coming from that list let's just put it that way okay so like one last thing uh i think it's one last thing yes one last thing to talk about on the revel uh reissue train of kits that were coming uh back out uh in these reissues for the first second quarter is this and is the frank iacono uh camara pro stock kit uh this was uh another one of these i think it was supposed to be a first quarter reissue that never quite made it out uh in time so that will be, uh, there was five kits in the second quarter, all of them were reissues, uh, and then there were, of course, uh, I believe eight, re eight reissues uh, in the first quarter. They got out several of those before uh, March when everything went completely closed. Um, of the eight, I believe there are five left, and this would be one of them, the Rommel's Rod would be one of them, and uh, the... Greece would be one of them. So at this point, I think the only thing we're waiting for from the first quarter would be the reissue of the 29 Ford. And there's one other thing that is slipping my mind right now, but I'm sure uh, somebody will remember what it is for me. Because the second quarter stuff was the Escalade, the GTX, and then a couple other... Uh, like I said, reissue. Just it was a second quarter was going to be real light because the financial problems were obvious when that list was put out to the uh, public. So there was nothing like 
knew about it. So it should be interesting to see how long it takes to get those other things. And of course, supposedly here in December, we'll get that new tool, Chevelle. So something to keep an eye out for. Uh, as a recent, oh, I know what the other thing is. It's that Boss 69 Boss Mustang. But that is also supposed to be a December release. So we're not expecting to see that immediately uh, either. So that'll take us overseas. Uh, we have one Hasegawa reissue. Uh, that'll leave us with one Hasegawa release for the month, and that is going to be the uh, that Rico JTCC car. But the reissue is this, the Toyota Celica GT4 RC. This is the street uh, kit of the uh, version, street kit version of the uh, rally kit that they uh, did also. So this represents the homogenization car that was sold only in Japan so that they could run the uh, rally car. It's been reissued a couple of times since we started doing the show. Curbside, uh, it is the only GT4 version. Tommy did do a Celica of this generation, but it is not uh, the rally spec version of the car. So there's that. Over at Aoshima, we got several re reissues. Uh, most of them were restocks. We do have a couple things that are, we'll talk a little bit uh, you know, more in depth about. On the reissue side of things, you have this, the 1982 Celica XX, or as we like to call it, the Celica Supra. Uh, just a reissue of the, of the kit that was reboxed into the model car lineup. And then you have the reissue of the three Back to the Future DeLoreans. Um, it seems like every time we do a video, we, do, we talk about these. Uh, clearly... Uh, they continue to sell well for Aoshima, without a doubt, because I know that these seriously get reissued at least twice a year. Um, if they're not on it every four months, or at least on it every six months. So, first one, second one, third one, uh, we talked about it before, second one, the wheels fold up, the third one has a uh, little section of railroad tracks, if you want to put it in that conversion, you can, or you can put it on the uh, wide whites uh, that it runs in the very beginning of the movie. Uh, the more interesting things, uh, just in terms of things that have not been reissued for a while, uh, are the two of the next kits in the More Grand Champions series, and they are the uh, two-door uh, 1980s, I think it was 1982, uh, Nissan Skyline, so you're getting a set of like formula meshes on this, and some uh, ground effects, and things like that that don't necessarily come with the regular uh, 82 Skyline Turbo kit. And then also you get a reissue of this, which is a uh, 330 generation uh, Nissan Cedric. I lost my train of thought there for a second. Uh, you know, this has the uh, different front end pieces that allow the, the, the Skyline headlights to be put in on a jaunty little angle. Uh, a set of 14-inch wheels that don't normally come with the kit. Uh, again, there's some a, a front spoiler, a, a, well, front... Lip spoiler, a rear spoiler, and a few other pieces here that normally don't come with this kit either uh, for the more Grand Champions look. So, cool things if you're into those, because, uh, again, those kits were most recently reissued 10 years ago. Uh, we have reissues from Fujimi. A couple, three to talk about real quick. One is this. is a Toyota Velfire ZAG Edition with the kit molded in black. Now, this is the original version of this. So, this is just a straight reissue of this kit. This kit came out, I think, it'll be, what, a year and a half ago at this point. <clears throat> maybe even closer to two years. Uh, this is how it came out in black. The modified reissue version that was also released this week is this, uh, the same kit molded in white pearl. So uh, I've still, like I said, I've had two of the things that they claim are molded in white pearl, the Hustler and the Suzu and the uh, little Mazda Flare. I don't particularly think they're very pearly in a sense of being metallic. I just think they're sort of a dull off white. Uh, but for people who don't want to paint over the black, hey, here's your option if you wanted a Velfire. Kits are completely identical otherwise. It's just what color of the body itself is molded in. The chassis and the interior are still molded in gray and black. It still comes with all of the Mylar decals, or stickers rather, so you don't have to paint it, but also includes the, the set of decals so that you can paint it. The other reissue and the last kit from Fujimi for the month of October is this, the reissue of their Mini Cooper S in a very basic blanky box art doesn't even have their doesn't even have their uh, you know Fujimi sticker on the front of it uh, disappointingly and I it, it bordering on that false advertising that Fujimi likes to do this kit does not come with a left-hand drive dashboard the literature for this kit when it was announced and all through up to its release said that it would have both domestic and export versions uh, steering. Now, I assume that they're going to get away with saying that it's not false advertising because the domestic and export, in this sense, is going to be UK and or Japan, and those two both have right-hand drive. This kit has been issued in the past 
with left-hand drive. If you get this kit or you look up the parts runner on uh, line, you will notice there's a big block missing off of the runner that has the uh, interior pieces, which is where the left-hand drive pieces are gated off in this release. So, uh, unless maybe Fujimi or uh, Hobby Search rather just rescan the old, just used basically the old kit with the new box art, uh, this does not have the parts that they said it would have, which would be a left-hand drive dashboard, the left-hand drive scuttle panel, and the left-hand drive wiper. So, as it stands, I believe that this is. Just a wee bit of a little bit of a disappointment. Mine's as of the box art uh, kits that said they were going to come with certain sets of wheels, and then they didn't with uh, some reissues earlier in the year. So those are done. That brings us, lastly, to uh, uh, one of the kits that was, well, I don't know, so much delayed, although I think this was supposed to come out in July, so technically I guess it is three months late, but uh, it was sort of a, a, a pot shot that we were going to get it on time. But we got the very slightly modified reissue of the BMW M6 GT3 kit from uh, Nunu Hobby uh, Platts, which is, of course, this is BMAX. Uh, this kit is modified in the sense that it comes with those fence over the front wheels that you see on the box art. <coughs> this livery is basically the livery for all three kits, more or less. This is Falcon Tires uh, livery. Uh, I believe that... Zero Paints, at least, offers the blue and the green that you need here. Uh, looking at the instructions, they're saying that Tommy a Brilliant Blue can cover the blue, and then you have to mix something for the green. A uh, number of Tommy colors. I don't know how technically true that would be. Uh, the decals you do get are sort of the mesh uh, in the middle where the green and the blue come together. You do get that sort of a, a mesh decal for both doors and the roof. Uh, that you get the presentation livery, which is what the box art shows you, and then you get the 2017 24 Hours of Nuremberg Ring livery, and you also get the 2017 uh, VLN series livery. And the VLN series, for people who don't know and don't follow GT3 racing, or well, just European racing in general, is a uh, 11 event racing series that is done only at the Nuremberg Ring. So uh, that is why this kit specifically was done. Or especially this car was specifically done, was because any BMW M6 that runs at Nuremberg Ring needs those cooling vents for the brakes, I'm assuming that's what they're for. Uh, when this car runs Sprint, when this car runs Endurance, anywhere else, it doesn't use those cooling vents, but I believe because, mostly because, the vehicle, uh, you know, the track at Nuremberg Ring is almost, what, eight miles long, uh, it's, you know, a little too hard on the brakes, as it were, and they need the extra cooling. Um, this kit also, and probably the most significant part of this kit, if you cared about an M6 GT3 and were, and didn't like the way that the 24 hours of Spa car came, the Rao Racing car that came, it comes with a completely and totally blank front windshield. Uh, for people who don't remember or people who don't know, the 24 hours of Spa car came with the position indicator partially molded into the windshield. Uh, there are two other pieces. There's like a backing piece, and then there's a piece, uh, clear, uh, which is a clear piece that you paint a different color, obviously. And then there is a uh, clear number board piece, which is basically like a digital, two digital clock numbers uh, that represents the LEDs that go in there. And then that got sandwiched into the windshield, which had a big uh, square cut out into it to accept this number board. That number board is raced at the Spa racetrack, and it's raced at perhaps uh, a couple three of the ADAC GT Masters uh, races as well. The way the decals stand right now for all of the M6s that you can build, and I'm even including some crappy decals that I personally wouldn't buy, there are only three liveries that use that scoreboard. The two Spa cars that you can build out of the box, and probably... Well, nobody's made the decals, but if somebody did, you could make the, the 99 and 98 cars for the 2017 24 hours of Spa. But the Spa cars that come out of the box, and then uh, the set that uh, Frankie did that has the uh, Bathurst uh, 12 hours car and the ADAC Masters car, because the ADAC Masters Schnitzer car does use that scoreboard, at least in the in the, for the car that we did, the what well, we did, I supplied the graphics, the, the pictures for, that we ended up doing, uh, that's from... Uh, Hockenheim. That car also uses that scoreboard. I think ADAC Masters uses that scoreboard just in general. 
in the 24 hours of Nuremberg, there is a scoring box, but it's up in the very top corner of the windshield, and it's integrated into the headlight, into the uh, windshield uh, tint banner. And so that's what they did with it, the, with this kit, is they integrated it into a decal into the windshield banner. So uh, for all of the, uh, for the, the, the set of decals that Frankie did for the 2016 Macau Rao car, for the set that Diego just did for the 2018 24 Hours of Daytona, for uh, the 12 Hours of Bathurst car, for other M6 liveries that will be coming out afterwards, this is the windshield that you needed. And the best part about this kit, I was going on about it, but the best part about this kit is those fender vents are supplied. They are not molded into the body, and the fenders are not cut out for them. So, you, yes, you will have to cut the fenders to mount those vents. They do not go on top of the model uh, the way some of the, the uh, test shots were built, which is not a fault to the builder of the model. They were asked to do something on a very, very short notice, and so they just stuck the parts on. Uh, they technically come up through the bottom of the fender as far as the way they, they're designed to mount in the kit, and so you do have to cut that out. But if you're building one of these kits, you have to integrate all those knack and ducks on the rear fender anyway, so you're doing body work. So what's well, a little bit more? Um, but, like I said, for, for a lot of us who wanted to build some other liveries, this is a kit that we were hoping and thankfully is uh, the clear windshield that we've always wanted. Having that number board in there was very unique in the sense that it's very specific to that race car. <laughs> Excuse me. It made that race car very uh, accurate in that respect. However, it really, really limited your ability to do anything else. So also with that, you got this, which is the uh, photo etch set specifically for this car. Uh, being that Platt's new new leasing are, are you know having this kit produced by BMAX and this is BMAX gag are producing specific photo watch for every single kit that they do uh, you get another set for this I don't necessarily know that there's anything about this photo watch set that is unique to this photo watch set uh, in the sense of uh, you know what's different and what's not um, I got to take out the set that uh, that uh, I have and compare it to the pictures of this set. I think that the carbon fiber is a little bit different. Uh, I can't tell from the pictures if it's all silver, like the one that we got originally, which was not very accurate as far as the colors go. But as far as the photo etch itself goes, it doesn't look like there's anything new there. And it does look like, from at least from the kit pictures, that if you want to put the front winglets on, if you want to put the cargo, the uh, driver safety nets on, and if you want to put the tow hooks on, you do need the photo etch set still. So... Uh, that's still, yeah, I, I kind of wish they would have done plastic parts for that. Just simply for the fact that not everybody wants to go out and blow another 19 bucks on the photo etch set. Or actually, it's closer to $25 because it has the decals in it. Nobody wants to blow the money on the photo etch set and then, you know, not use the photo etch if they just go, want the the, uh, the carbon fiber. Now, granted, there is a carbon fiber set for the M6 from Studio 27. But, you know, it's a lot of forcing people to buy add-ons in order to get what should be in the kit, you know, it'd be one thing if you sort of molded it to the body, uh, the way that, let's say, the Z4, uh, kit has it, uh, I, I need to, I've got my files up here, let me see if I can see, if you look on the, uh, right here, on the, uh, BMW, it's not gonna focus because there's way too much going on behind it, but, uh, maybe the back will focus, I don't know. I don't really have anything that that's blank that I can put behind it. It's very hard to get white focus on a camera in the first place. But at any rate, the, the point is that there is a little toe strap integrated into the bumper here. And there's a little toe strap integrated into the bumper here. It's very faint engraving, but it's there. It gives you the, the essence of what you need. And if you want to go buy the Hobby Design upgrade set, you could. And, you know, drill that whole thing out and put an actual toe hook in. Um, I would have liked to have seen that or some resemblance of that. Pretty much every kit now comes with plastic tow hooks and the ability to mount them. So, I don't know. It's just one of them things you got to deal with. It's the way the kit is, and there's nothing you can do to change it, really. So, <coughs> it remains to be seen when we're going to get that sprint car version of the M6 GT3. Uh, there is one that they're going to be doing for Team Italia, uh, which is the blank pane race version. 
that is for the three-hour sprint races, which would uh, have delete out the uh, front driving lights, the, the lights below the headlights, and put in plate uh, over them. Uh, technically, you could, of course, just put the carbon fiber decal on the little glass piece and, and call it even, but this will have an actual plate piece there so you don't have to mount the uh, lights or whatever. Um, again, it's one of those nth degree uh, reissues, so it'll be interesting to see what that kit has in it other than the plate thing. So I'm on, I'm on, having a, a car that... I, I, it's one of those things, now that we see what we've gotten out of this Nuremberg, or the, what I, excuse me, yeah, the Nuremberg kit, uh, in the terms of the fender vents being in it, but not part of the kit, in the sense you have to drill the holes, or you know, cut the holes out and mount the fence separately, and it has a clear windshield, I'm not exactly sure what the necessity would be, other than getting the livery, because somebody, and so far nobody has done the Team Italia livery in general, uh, to buy that one. So, I mean, that may be one of those kits you buy one of if you're really into that livery, especially if it has uh, uh, the drivers that you like in it because that car, it did in certain races, have, uh, I can't think of what his name is, one of the DTM drivers for BMW, Martin Tom's there. Uh, it did have him as a driver in a couple of races, so be interested to see if that's one of the races they picked. Uh, and going for fan, basically. I mean, Ravel did all those DTM kits with Martin Tomzik in them, and uh, so I know he's a popular enough driver that Ravel felt that they could sell model kits with his name attached to them. So, anyway, guys, I think that wraps this one up. A uh, little bit of blabbery in there, but, uh, you know, what are you going to do? Give you, give you something to, to watch and listen to some point this week. Uh, I'm not sure when this video is going to necessarily get up. Our internet here has been very spotty the last couple of days. And uh, if I, I may have to run this down to McDonald's <laughs> and upload it there if I have to. So, anyway, guys, that'll uh, wrap this one up. We'll talk to you. See you guys on the other side.